have the heart to tell him that our guest canceled on us. It's uh, going to be pretty rough. So I'm very sorry to report that we were actually going to have Steve Wynn here today. Mm. He was going to be talking all about how he's opening a new I'm casino. Sorry, I'm and sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. What? Yeah. What? Watch. Uh, what? What's happening here? Is there a problem I'm sorry. with that beer? I watch this all the time, and all I can see is the fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's yeah, all right. Absolutely nuts. Well, maybe this is a good, you know, our guest didn't show up. Maybe yeah, you want to yeah. sit down Did and... Did you want to take... Thank you for doing that, by Yeah, as long as you're here. Yeah. Thanks. Give a round of applause. Woo! Yeah, from Avery. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm sorry. I have to make an entrance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. So you run a business called Maidly. Now, we I mentioned do? you very briefly on the Progressive Labs yes. episode a little while ago. However, you were unfortunately unable to make it. So very pleased sorry. to have you here. So why don't you give us what Maidly is in your words? Um, Maidly is a domestic cleaning company, but it's... <laughs> We try to make the whole user experience as effortless as possible. So we have an online booking system. We have very, very good customer service, whether it be online, on chat, 24 hours a day, phone calls. Um, and we only hire very, very experienced maids. So the quality of the service is in in impeccable, really. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I also hear that you guys have this really kind of upfront costs, which I find is a big problem with a lot of other cleaning companies. They come in and you sort of know a ballpark, but you're just never sure how much it's going to cost. And then you get this big shock on your credit card statement <laughs> and things like that. So I hear you guys are mitigating for that too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I first moved here, I tried to book in a clean for my husband's office. And that was before I knew what I was going to do. And the whole process was an absolute nightmare. It took me about three days to eventually book someone in. And I just thought, well, this is definitely something that I could do. Um, I could definitely improve on this. I love working with the public. I love customer service businesses. Um, I'm a bit of a geek, so I love technology. So a mixture of all of it just yeah, it kind of like made sense. Um, we do hourly rates, mm -hmm. um, starting at $30 an hour. Um, and you just pay for the time that the maids are there. So it's really simple. That's You're, really simple and straightforward. Yeah. And I hear that there's a lot of fans here in the Ogden that use maids. <laughs> yeah, well. we've used it. That's what cleans up after the podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I promise we won't put you to work tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, yeah. So yeah, you do the downtown area, I'm sorry? We do. Well, mm -hmm. we cover the whole of Las Vegas. Oh, like. wow. Okay. Um, so absolutely everywhere. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, we have two teams of maids that cover the downtown area at the moment. And we're expanding quite quickly. Quickly. People awesome. seem to be liking us, so yeah, we're going very well. It's good. And having lots of fun. You've mm -hmm. always hated fingerprints? I have. Mm. <laughs> Off with her. Have you ever made a mess, Dave? I've made a mess or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never leave fingerprints. <laughs> I like it, I like it. All right, All right, so if someone's looking to erase some fingerprints or they just want their house cleaned, where can they go? Uh, at www.madely.net. Oh, oh, look, okay, look. then I gotta make the thing. Okay, Paul, Dylan. Thing. I'm just Again. <laughs> get double, twist it around. All right, maybe awesome. we should. What do you think about it? Do you think she's qualified to pick the fortune of the week? I think she is very qualified to pick the fortune of the week. There you go. You gotta get your, yeah, well, or we should wait till I did the app, but. Okay. So you wanna pick a random one out? And Nina, our lovely fortune yeah. cookie handler. Nice, nice good better. job. We'll Thanks, be checking Rachel. in with that later. All right, now on to you, Dave. So it's not drink board anymore. Now it is on me. You guys are growing like crazy. Tell me about this app. Tell me about what's going on. Uh, thanks for having us, first of all. Uh, it's drink board is dead. Uh, it's, but evolved. It's, it's evolved. It's yes. evolved. It's grown into it's on me. It drank itself into it's <laughs> into, into, into change. It went to rehab. Yes. Came out a better person. <laughs> right. It's right. funny because I was I was reading the description and I was like, wait, this sounds like another. Oh, drink board. Drink okay. board. Yeah. Yes. So, we, we we weren't expecting the amount of positive feedback we were going to get so fast out of the gate, and uh, and then we had lots of merchants and businesses coming to us outside of hospitality. Wow. Uh, salons and spas and and retail, and we figured we should you know while we were young and before we blew up too much. Right, for you Hopefully, too. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> before we had explained to too many people why we were changing the name, which wasn't so hard a couple months ago, <laughs> um, did we move into a name that really described the, the concept of you know buying someone a gift, being selfless, and, uh, and, and something that would work in any vertical. So uh, we're super excited about it, but we're still hospitality based. It's all restaurants and hotels, uh, but we have lots of, new, uh, lots of new restaurants and bars and 
and hotels and uh, lots of new food items and drink items and even some retail. And it's uh, everyone's having a lot of fun. You know, people are people are thinking about other people. And for the community, we're uh, you know we're driving business into into neighborhood businesses. It's uh, it's really cool to see technology supporting community. And that's that's actually that. really cool. Yeah, we're really excited about it. And congrats for expanding too. Thank that's you awesome. very much. And we're hiring and oh wow and, and everything. We're looking for good people and but so in in a nutshell, what you've done is you've made it so that if I want to buy someone a drink, I don't physically have to be in the same room. I can actually gift it to them across distances. Um, I love that concept, but the main thing that I think is great about your, about your company is your team, right? So you have like a dream team of people who are like putting this together and making this happen. So tell me about the team. I mean, I, I don't know what I could say about the team yeah. in, in 20 minutes, much less just a couple. <laughs> I, I could clearly be working for any one of the people on my team. They're, <laughs> they're all amazing. That's really cool. Nice. They're really amazing. Uh, so our, our director of business development, Rachel Wenman, came, you know, she's born and raised in Vegas, has relationships for days. On top of you know yeah. a work ethic and a heart and just a badass, uh, you know our product manager came from Wall Street sixty, another wow. company here. Mm -hmm. Right, so many locals. Yeah, so I mean these locals. are all people that we know. And yeah, and then my partner John is uh, is you know we've been friends for uh, you know a long time, and uh, and he's basically a rock star across <laughs> the board. And, uh, and my COO is uh, you know. I should clearly be working for him, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and we were lucky enough to get him to join us. So it's a uh, dream oh, team. Awesome. Everyone shows up early, leaves late, cares, and uh, it's nice to have a beer with them. Well, so, yeah. could you want? Yeah, could have That's a beer awesome. with you. Yeah, yeah. so uh, so the best thing hmm, uh, that people can do is download the app. Check you out right now, and then they can download it, get a beer. What's the? Do you have any promotions going on or anything they can? There's a lot of stuff going on. Okay. Because really you're working with for the people. you're working with tons of bars around here, right? Tons of bars. We got okay. half of Fremont Street, probably more than half of Fremont Street. I'm not so good at fractions, um, <laughs> <laughs> right there. Um, but we're working with tons of people, a lot of brands, and there's a lot of fun stuff going on. And you can just text, "It's on me." No spaces. I T S O N M E mm -hmm. to three one nine nine six. Okay. That's, That's how it's easy on it is. me to three one nine nine six, and you can uh, and it'll send you an invite to download the app, and uh, you might just happen to get a gift. And if you download tonight, just spur of the moment, and uh, you Instagram like a, a photo of your download mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. we'll buy you a drink right now. Oh, Whoa. guys, get on that! It sounds awesome. Yeah, we're all going downstairs to Wild. After this for some okay, drinks, and I'll buy you drinks down there. That, that sounds, sounds good. great. There you go. All right, well, thank you very much for coming out. Mm -hmm. And thank, thank you, crazy. Rachel. Yeah. And a round of applause for our yeah, awesome Yeah, thank you guys. Time. Appreciate you coming out. Of time. Okay, so this is the fortune cookie segment. Have you ever played that game Telephone? Well, this is Telephone 2.0, because we have a fortune cookie that goes along with it. So I am going to give the fortune to, what's your name? Kristen. Kristen, you are going to take the cookie and open it. And you're going to read what it says, but to yourself. Don't tell anybody. Perfect. And then you're going to take this sword and whisper <laughs> the fortune to the person to your right. And then it's going to snake around the audience until we get to the front. And then we will see what the fun message of this week is. Perfect. Yep. You just gotta let it soak it in, you know? Yeah. It's like a flower in the rain. You just let it in. Okay, so our next guest is here to talk about his lifelong goal of riding a horse in zero gravity, how he had the Christmas tree song, Oh Christmas Tree, stuck in his head for over two years and dealt with it through many therapy sessions and the things that he learned, and how he created Zappos Insight. <laughs> The B2B wing of Zappos.com that trains thousands of companies in culture, engagement, customer service, leadership, and innovation. And he is also the author of this book. It's called The Culture Blueprint. And we're going to hear a little bit about what you've been up to while you're writing this. So please put your hands together and cheer ridiculously loud and long for our next guest, Robert Richmond. Thank you very much. Wow. All right. Yeah. 
Do, do, do you guys play drinking games on the show here? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, no, yeah, wait, you got one? I, I got you got one. a new one for I us? I got one. The, the, the game is <laughs> you have to take a drink or a shot every time somebody says the word the. Oh, oh my. <laughs> oh my, that would be wild. <laughs> well, does it count for the audience, do you? Yeah. Well, I guess we'll need the intern to bring more beer out, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but first off, let me talk to you about uh, this book. So you say in it that... Um, the Vatican isn't the most spiritual place on earth. Is that what I hear? Oh, well, that's separate from the book. Oh, I didn't read it yet. You <laughs> gave it to me. <laughs> no. But stuff like that can be inferred after reading this and becoming equally smart. This is the most spiritual city in the world. Like, that's. That's like three does already. What? It's, that's three does already in your first sentence. <laughs> that's <laughs> like this. Is, like, there's like fun and then there's just too much. Right. But we'll just. Right. It's all right, it's all right, you set the rules. Yeah. So I don't know, I just had fun looking into this, that uh, the first person who said this, that Vegas is the most spiritual city in the world, you want me to keep drinking, is that what that is? <laughs> it was a joke. The game is a joke, people. Um, so it was actually the first person to say Vegas is the most spiritual city in the world, it was Deepak Chopra. Because okay. he said it's the only city that really embraces fully what it is. Doesn't try to pretend to be something that's not. about Vegas? Yeah. And then I started to look for it. And there are clues. Clock, huh? Yeah. Clues all over. So think about it this way. Like all the casinos, the, those big, huge monolithic buildings that are out there, mm -hmm. they are the new cathedrals. And so people make pilgrimage here, 40 million people a year to worship the food, sex, money, entertainment gods. Yeah, I guess that's true. And it's like got this odd religious overtone there. I hear so, people praying to that. One they, yeah, and, and all they day long, yeah. Right, but I mean, and, 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 uh, and, and think about it this way, when, when it reduces you to nothing, mm -hmm. like, you know, then it's like the VH1 yeah. behind the music story where they, you hit rock bottom, and that's where everything gets better. That's where you find your true soul. So the city reduces you to nothing if it has to, <laughs> just to get you to see what's real. I think I see your positive message in there. There's, yeah, yeah, that's really they're cool. All over. The one I discovered recently <laughs> was that, you know, the, the whole phrase, like, let there be light. God said, let there be light, right? So the idea with that is that Vegas has more light per capita than any other city. Oh, yeah. It's got with, at night, and, but then also during the day, there's more than 300 totally sunny days a year. So day or night, Vegas has the most light out of any city. What's that pyramid building? Luxor, maybe? Luxor, yeah. That's probably where he hangs out. Okay. Mm. Um, <laughs> So you talked, uh, so I watched a, another interview with you because I was preparing for this one. Mm -hmm. And you talked about how a parent who has 15 babies can help them yeah. learn lessons. Maybe we could share that if anybody has lots of babies. <laughs> I have 15 babies, how do I, okay. so the, how do I deal with that? <laughs> the context for this, wow, you really read it drunk, didn't you? <laughs> The context for this was the book talks about how to find your core values and really have it within a company. And the idea being, why would you do this? Why would it be a good idea to run a company by core values? And the corollary of the story, the analogy, is, is that a guy who had 15 kids was asked, how the heck do you do it? How do you manage 15 kids? And he said, simple, you have very few rules. And that's how you do it. And I think the two rules were be polite and be safe. And everybody had to live by those rules. And that's how he had order in the family. Rather than gotcha. trying to prescribe every rule in the book and try to manage every single little kid. So he's relating every, he's hoping the kids probably relate the problem to that bigger value system, right? Right? The, the, or am I, yeah, well, okay. Oh my God. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is like, yeah. But I'm saying like, you have Are two values. Are we in the outtakes systems. already? Like, no. I thought that comes after the clip. I was trying to be real smart. <laughs> like, I thought that was my goal, you know? Like, you have a value system. Be nice to people, you know? It's everything. Yes. All right. <laughs> well, I guess I can't handle 15 babies. All right. Um, so, you like improv, I heard? You're yeah, I just came bit. from there tonight, actually. This was the first oh, time. Oh, you did? Yeah. Just before this. This was the first time we Since did. Since we talked and, and yeah, before this show. Yeah, okay. we talked. Oh, we, okay, so you already did a, an improv scene. Yes. Okay, good. We did, yeah. You're geared up for it. And what's the thing you tell me you always say, and? Yes, and. Okay, explain that to them. So and the, how that relates it's, to entrepreneurs. It's, it's this concept with an improv called yes, and. So the idea is that you don't deny something. That, that somebody says, oh, I drove up in a Ferrari. You don't say, no, you don't. That was a Porsche because it, it, it ruins the scene. So right. you have to just say yes, and, and go with it and let it build on it. And what I'm realizing that as a training is amazing because... Um, it's like reality training. You have to talk yeah. about like pivot in a lean startup. It's all about saying, okay, this is what happens. It's, it's happening. This is what's real. How can I embrace this and say this should be happening and then do something from there? So every time you think something's going wrong, just saying, yes, and this is the reality. I'm embracing it and then moving forward from there. Okay. I, I really did like that. I think that's 
Pretty cool. So I wanted to hear this story about how Tony Shea bought you 10 shots and you blacked out. And mm. then when you black out, I thought we could start playing a fictional version of And Then. Or it's called And Then, right? So you said? Yes, And. OK, oh, Yes, And. So we'll start <laughs> Yes, And after that, OK? So, so you tell the real story until yeah. the blackout happens. OK. And then I'll Yes, And You'll, the rest of the story. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Be kind okay. of a nice mix of lies and truth. Got it. Yeah. Cool. All right, I'm rolling with that. So, yeah, this was like five years ago, and um, I'll get to the moral really quick. The moral is never make a bet with Tony Shea, because he, he will always win. He's just that smart a guy. And it was a long story with the bet, but when, what I was used to with my friends was that when you bet shots or drinks or like a pitcher of margaritas, is that you have that as like a, a, a bank stock. And I can say, if I won 10 shots from you, then tonight I'm going to take three, and then tomorrow night I'm going to get four, right? Okay. But the way Tony did it was he just bought all 12 at once. Ooh. And we were out at this kind of going night. all it's all in strategy. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't had much to eat. I had uh, like Advil, and I just <laughs> for dinner. It's <laughs> kind of. Okay. And so I just started taking these down. And the next thing I know, you know, when you kind of get like that blurred, that double vision, when you're when when you're drinking. For some yeah, reason, I got it right now. <laughs> yeah, right there, yeah, exactly. So it's double interviews. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had that, but everything was crystal clear. Like I would see two of you and two of you, and I just that was the last clear moment. Okay. And, and there was a dance floor involved, by the way. I'll give you a little more context here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, and. Okay. So then you black out, and you find a purple porcupine. Yes. And I started <laughs> dancing the merengue with the purple porcupine. My god. Did it hurt? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> it was also very sexy. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oh, I, I have to do it too, right? Because it's a back and forth thing. Oh, you can. You don't have to say I don't yes, do, and you just you just keep you just roll with it. So, like, okay. what what happened on the sexy dancing with the porcupine? Gotcha. Okay, so then the porcupine uh, confused about how he didn't know if he wanted to be a tightrope walker. Oh, I don't know. Right, just, and then <laughs> suddenly there was a tightrope right there, and he was going to walk on it, and he got, went on it, but he'd had six drinks, so. So he decided to join a marching band. Yes. And the marching band was a techno marching band, and suddenly all these disco lights came on, and everybody was dancing techno. Wow. Great story yeah. with Tony Shea. <laughs> Good job with that. I like it. Don't quote that one. Uh, I don't know if you could quote it in context. How people can get in touch with you if they're curious to learn more about this crazy night you had. LinkedIn oh, is geez. a good resource. LinkedIn, sure. Robert Richmond there. The uh, cultureblueprint.com or robertrichmond.com. Happy to connect. Okay. And then in this book, give me a quick summary. What can, why, why should an entrepreneur take this book, read it, yeah. apply it to their life? Basically, because once you get to that point where the business model is actually proven and you've, you, you start to grow, you start to realize as an entrepreneur that you're not really running things. It's the culture, it's the, the company. And if you don't get a hold of it and actually actively design the culture, then the, tra the, the train can really go off the rails. Yes. So this is a whole plan to, to keep it on the rails and empower people in a way that uh, helps you reach your goals. So glad we got that out. That was the whole point of why you <laughs> exist. Yeah, and I almost missed it, so thank you. It's all right. All right, I think we should give him one of our, one of our famous uh, cheers songs. What do you guys think? We've been practicing this for a couple episodes. This is our new drinking song. Wow. Cheers! All right. Happy holidays to you. I'm Mac Holiday with Holiday What TV. I celebrate holidays all the days on, on YouTube. If you knew who I was before you saw me here today and you haven't subscribed to my show yet, I don't like you. I don't. But you still have time to subscribe whenever you like. I would appreciate that. And I'll pretend to like you on the outside because really it's all about how you act. Actions on the outside. So who here believes in um, aliens, in, in extraterrestrials? Anybody? You do? Do you, do you want to get abducted if you believe? No. Yes? No. Who, wants, who wants to be abducted? I want to see hands. We got Dan. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> I feel a little bit sad for you because I feel like you should want to own your time on this planet. 
But that's okay. I totally think it's okay. God bless you. Anyway, today is Extraterrestrial Abductions Day. That's what today is. There are people all around the world. I, these, I don't make these holidays up, people. There are people all around the world waiting outside all night long, watching for UFOs, wishing to be abducted. Or if you don't believe, you can be at home and watch movies about aliens and UFOs. Anyone have any recommendations? That's what I'm doing tonight. I need a good alien movie. Anyone got one? Alien. Oh, <laughs> you gotta be original. I'm just saying. Yes. Okay. So another holiday today is Won't You Be My Neighbor Day? Yay! Won't You Be My Neighbor Day? Why? Why do you think today is called Won't You Be My Neighbor Day? It's his birthday today. Fred Rogers. Yay, Fred Rogers. So. I'm, I want to do a little something with you guys. I'm going to connect the TV and the music and the song, and we're all going to sing that theme song together. Because we know it, don't we? That's to try. Put your arms around each other. This is why I love downtown, because we're all very neighborly anyway, right? Yes. Uh, actually, no, here. We should, we should be like this. OK. Are you guys ready? <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful day, day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would, Would you, you be, be mine? mine? Could you Could be you mine? Be mine? It's, it's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. A neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I've always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would, would you be, be mine? mine? Could, Could you be mine? mine? Would, would you be my neighbor? neighbor? Won't, won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my neighbor? Yay, good job! Very good. All right. I feel a little bit nice and loose now. So, you know this guy. Pavel, he's here, he's a regular. We gotta love and support. <laughs> Pavel, Pavel is here on behalf of the uh, Las Vegas Mini Maker Fair, who are our sponsors. And guess what, last week with Modify Watches, by the way, by the way, do you see what they sent me? So nice of them, gracious, gracious. Two so fisting. we celebrated, a, what? You're two fisting them. Yeah, I was, oh, that's, oh. okay, we're gonna take that out. That's dirty, <laughs> that's dirty. No, it's, 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 it's a beer it's thing. It's a beer thing, it's not, okay. it's not what oh, you, not that, okay, good. yeah. Um, okay. We don't live in that world. I'm sweating now. So, um, <laughs> so last month we celebrated, no, last week with them, last week we celebrated National Craft Month in March. This coincides perfectly with what the Las Vegas Mini Maker Fair is doing, not to mention the fact the third week of March every year, I know you know this, is National Manufacturing Week. Two holidays <laughs> come together beautifully, beautifully with Las Vegas Mini Maker Fair. So, Pavel, tell them what it's all about. Well, okay, the Las Vegas Mini Maker Fair is an event that's kind of like a giant show and tell um, where people who make cool things can bring them down, uh, get a booth and show them off. Um, it's a little bit like a craft fair, but instead of a focus on selling, it's a focus on sharing and education. Um, and it's being produced by the Sin Shop Hackerspace of Las Vegas. Mm. I was preparing a little bit for this and I saw online uh, these amazing things people were making and they're really excited to talk to you about what they're making and for you, to make also. So has this happened here before yet in Vegas? This is our second Maker Faire. Um, last year we had one on February 2nd at the Fifth Street School and it was a fantastic event. Uh, we're back this year, a little bit later in the year. Um, so it's on April 5th um, and we're gonna do it at the, uh, the, container, the Learning Village next to the Container Park actually. Um, it'll be bigger and better than last year so please come down. Oh nice, and, and who, should, who should come? Um, well, all of you uh, watching, uh, anybody who's interested in making things, learning how to make things, kids, adults, um, we have a special trailer area for people, um, well, well, for, I guess, little people? No, yeah, well, kids interest stuff. <laughs> so there's lots of kids crafts. And <laughs> That's good, because March happens to be, why are you laughing about little people? I don't know. Um, so March happens to be Youth Art Month which can certainly carry over into April. The youth should always be doing the art, so I love this. They should be there and creating. Uh, what is a maker, do tell? 
Um, well, it's somebody who makes things. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, what? I know, right? Um, so that can be um, anything. So whether you do uh, paper mache horse heads or um, electronics, if you build robots, if you do quilting, um, pretty much anything. You, know, you, you, you could be making food. Um, yeah. I saw online uh, on YouTube, people literally making from scratch their own submarines, without exaggeration, like big submarines, cars, consumer electronics and toys. It's very inspiring to watch. Um, Absolutely. How can we all support this <laughs> Well, project? I guess the best way to show your support for the Las Vegas Mini Maker Fair is to buy your tickets online at uh, ticketcake.com um, for the Las Vegas Mini Maker Fair on April 5th. Um, there's a discount if you buy them in advance. We also sell tickets at the door. Um, show up, hang out, meet the makers, um, share it with your family and friends, and come down and, and, and just uh, yeah, celebrate making dumb. Making dumb? <laughs> <laughs> Making dumb. Making dumb. I love it. And on that the amazing note, <laughs> happy holidays. Thank you so much to our sponsor, Las Vegas Mini Maker Fair. Happy holidays. Because <laughs> now in my head, I'm like, what? Oh, what happened? Making dumb. I'm so sorry. I hope it's a good bazaar. No, it's a good bazaar. Okay. <laughs> of the week is for downtown tech las vegas and without further ado let me know what it is you're a great fortune it's on me you're a great fortune it's on me that's <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a little bit close how how close are you willing to be i don't know okay all right so the fortune for this week is this week's good fortune will fall upon anyone who works in a shipping container. Do you work in a shipping container? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who works in a shipping container? Okay, we've got to find someone in a shipping container and deliver this fortune to them. All right. Thanks very much for playing along. Don't forget to spell it with the hashtag